So please tell us your name and organization. I'm James Hansen. I'm the uh, director of the Climate Science Awareness and Solution Program at Columbia University Earth Institute. And in July you came out with a report about ocean rise, sea level and ocean rise and ice melt. Can you tell us a little bit about that report? Yeah, our new paper is titled Ice Melt, Sea Level Rise and Superstorms. And what it's about is the threat that we have of uh, melting on the Greenland ice sheet and especially the Antarctic ice sheet. Uh, and we show that there are amplifying feedbacks that occur in the Southern Ocean so that as fresh water from melting ice is dispensed to the surface of the Southern Ocean, it, it um, reduces the ability of the ocean to expel heat into the atmosphere and space and instead the heat is used to melt the ice shelves which buttress the Antarctic ice sheet. So as these are melting, it allows Antarctica to expel icebergs to the ocean more rapidly and, um, and the Antarctic ice sheet is losing mass and sea level is beginning to rise faster. And the danger is that if we continue to increase CO2 at the rapid rates that we are, that within uh, several decades we will get sea level rise of many meters. That would mean all coastal cities would become dysfunctional. The economic implications of that for young people, uh, people who are alive in the middle and the second half of this century, is enormous. It would it, the uh, large fraction, uh, most of our large cities are on coastal locations. So we. The planet may become ungovernable, the implications would be so great. The people who would be, become migrants would be enormous. The entire country of Bangladesh would be underwater. So we can't let that happen. But to avoid it, we're going to need to phase down our carbon emissions rapidly. And the only way that's going to happen is if we make the price of fossil fuels honest. It should include the cost to society of air pollution and water pollution from the fossil fuels and the climate change. And if we did that, you know, our, uh, we could get the market to help us move to clean energies and, and preserve a livable planet for young people. Earlier during your talk, you said that we are in an emergency. This is an emergency, I think you said. How dire is the situation with climate disruption? Well, the climate system, on average, responds relatively slowly over decades. And that's why it's so difficult for the public to become uh, con sufficiently concerned about this. But it's now at a, at a point where if we don't make changes over the next several years, then we're going to guarantee that young people inherit a situation that's basically out of their control, that the climate changes will be occurring over the next several decades, and it will be practically impossible for them to stop it. Uh, you mentioned migrants, and there is an emergency going on in Europe right now where thousands, hundreds of thousands of folks are trying to find a place to live. Is that crisis related to climate? In fact, it is partly related climate and on the long run climate will become the big driver for migrants from tropical uh, low latitude regions because it's becoming warmer and warmer at these low latitudes and it's becoming uh, it will become an undesirable place to live and who causes that to happen well it's the wealthy countries at middle and high latitudes who are burning the fossil fuels and causing the climate problem. And those uh, developing countries are going to understand that. They're going to blame the countries that, uh, that burn the fossil fuels. So we really have to understand that. It's not just rising sea level. There are other impacts of burning these fossil fuels and rapidly changing 
the atmosphere in a range that has not occurred in millions of years. You have, you have joined a lawsuit with 21 youth under the age of 18 against the federal government, which in essence says that you're, you're telling the White House, you're telling the federal government that it has knowingly continued a energy policy of fossil fuel energy generation. Can you tell us a little bit about that lawsuit and what you hope to achieve with it? Yeah, well, the hope is that the third branch of our government, the judicial branch, will be less under the thumb of the fossil fuel industry. So we're asking the courts to look at the constitutionality of what the federal government is doing, because the federal government realizes that this is a problem, that uh, climate change is a problem and it's caused by burning fossil fuels. And yet they're not doing anything effective about it. They are depriving young people of life, liberty, and property without due process of law. If you look at our Constitution, young people are people. They, should, they have all these rights that are guaranteed by the Constitution. And that's what we're asking uh, the courts to look at. And I think that this may be our best chance to force the government to do its job. The climate change, we're seeing the temperature is increasing more or less linearly, but there are parts of the climate system that will respond to that global warming in a very nonlinear fashion. And we know that from the Earth's history. When ice sheets have become warm enough to begin to collapse, it can happen very rapidly. You can get sea level rise of several meters within a century or less. And that's uh, something that would be extremely difficult to adapt to. In fact, practically, you can't adapt except to abandon your cities, and, and the costs of that are, are uh, enormous. So, yeah, some parts of the climate system can respond in a rapid, nonlinear response. For example, the stock market, think of that. If you have uh, bad economic policies, the stock market may go along changing up and down, but then once, after the policies have been in place long enough, you may just get a collapse, a uh, stock market crash. Well, that's what we have the potential for in the case of ice sheets. So that's just one example of a nonlinear. We still have a number of cl what they call climate deniers out there that claim that all of this is a bunch of hooey, that the climate issue is a temporal thing that's going to wax and wane. What would you say to climate deniers if you were speaking to them? Well, we know that these changes are not natural because uh, we can now measure the energy balance of the planet. See, what we do when we add carbon dioxide to the atmosphere is reduce the heat radiation to space so that there's more energy coming in than there is going out. And as long as that's the case, if you've got more energy coming in than going out, then the planet's going to get warmer. Well, we can now measure that energy balance very accurately because we, uh, the nations of the world have cooperated in spreading around the world's ocean more than 3,000 floats that dive down into the ocean and measure the temperature and salinity of the ocean to a depth of two kilometers and then come back to the surface, radio the information to a satellite. Well, what we can then learn from that data is that the oceans are getting warmer and warmer. Uh, that's because of this energy imbalance. Most of that energy has to go into the ocean and uh, we can now measure that. So, and because the planet is out of balance, we know it's going to keep getting warmer. Year by year, it can fluctuate, but over decades, it's going to keep getting warmer. Older people who have had life experiences and now have a lot of power, uh, a lot of votes, uh, a lot of, and they have time, which many young people don't have. They have a hard enough time trying to make a living for uh, their children, that they can't spend uh, a lot of time trying to solve this problem. But some of the older people can become more involved in this. And I think that's one of the reasons that I'm becoming hopeful that we can get a sufficient attention to this if we get uh, elderly people to understand not only that it's a problem, 
but have some notion as to what is needed to solve it, because otherwise politicians will concoct their own solution, which is often not a solution at all. And that's, that's why it's really important to get enough people uh, to put pressure on the system to make real changes.